Church. My name is Jonah and this is Blair. We welcome you to New Love to You. Enjoy! Good morning to you. My name is Wendy and I'd like to welcome you to New Life to You. Thank you so much for joining us today. Stay tuned for a great worship and a blessed word. Hi guys, it is Shiloh and Aki and I am so excited to welcome you to church today. Welcome and David and the Psalms, he said I was so excited when they said let us go um, to the house of the Lord and I'm so excited that we're not going to church but we get to be all together Jesus with us worshiping praising God amen bye hi everyone welcome to church this morning my name is Henry and I'd like to open with us in prayer Lord Jesus we thank you this morning that you love us that you care for us that you're watching over us Lord I ask that you lead God guide and shepherd us that you remove the spirit of agitation and discord, the spirit of suffocation, Lord, that you allow us to come into life and into liberty, into wholeness and happiness. Nothing broken, nothing missing. That this be a wonderful service, that you lead the word, Lord God, that would come into our homes, that you allow your angels to encamp about us, to protect us, to um, allow us Lord God, to see you with a new um, set of eyes, that we have a revelation of heaven this morning. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're about to do in our presence. Amen. Good morning my friends, welcome to New Life to You. My name is Jacques and this is my lovely wife Nadja. Good morning and welcome to church. If you're new in this channel, please visit our homepage New Life to You to get more information. Here you can become part of our online community. Our desire is to get to know you better. Our mission is to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. For our regulars, why don't you share this link right now to someone in your contact list and you could possibly change someone's life today. We are about to go into a time of worship. But before we do that, you will see on the screen, Jesus is. Take a few moments and write down in our live chatter box who Jesus is to you.
friends, now is the time for giving to the Lord. And we would like to share with you a story from our favorite book in the Bible, which is the book of Acts. Nacho, would you please read for us Acts 2, verse 42 to verse 46. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts. Friends, we see here that we are all part of one family and we are here to take care of each other. When you become a Christian, your family becomes very big because now you are part of the body of Christ. And within the body of Christ, we are not after materialistic possessions. We are building our castles up in heaven. And when we see need in our community, we need to address that. If there are anybody of you that feel today a special amount on their hearts, please share that and you will be blessed threefold from Jesus Christ. It says in Philippians 4 verse 19, God will meet all your needs according to His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. You will see now on the screen that there are different ways to give, example with EFT, with Snapscan or with credit card. Let me pray for us on that. God, thank you very much for showing us that it is not our money, it is not our time, but it is your money and your time that we need to share with other people. Thank you for guiding our life, thank you for guiding our time, and thank you for guiding our finances. We pray that in Jesus' name. Friends, there's also another area of need, which is the One Fund. And this is an initiative taken by the leadership of New Life City Church, where we are addressing the very, very big need of people in our community that have been devastated by the COVID-19 pandemic, where have been loss of jobs, loss of income and they really really need um, extra funds where they can be able to provide for their family. If there's an additional amount that you would like to share please go to the website scroll down to our banking details and make sure that in the reference that you do write one fund because we are one family within New Life City Church and within the bigger body of Christ. Thank you, Jacques and Nadia, and hello, everyone, and welcome again to New Life to You. Um, we are this morning going to be diving and continuing as we were last week in the book of Jonah. And so, if you have your Bibles, go to the third chapter of this book, and I'm going to be praying in just a moment, and we're going to go straight into the message that the Lord has for us. And this is a special one because I believe that what we have here is a prophetic word for our president, President Cyril Ramaphosa. It's something that we can pray into and uh, you'll see in a couple of moments the special message here. So let's pray 
and we'll continue. Father, we want to thank you for this day, Sunday, that we can pray, that we can open up your word, and that we can meet online. We pray that you would speak into our hearts, into our spirits, in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Come on, say it again. Amen. So, chapter 3 of Jonah. And before I read, I want to make this statement. God is into government. God is into government. I think one of the biggest tragedies of modern times is this idea of the separation between church and state, as if the government's got nothing to do with the church and church has got nothing to do with government. They couldn't be further from the truth. In the scriptures, we read of Jesus, where prophetically speaking, says the government will be on his shoulders. The Bible calls him the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Another way to say that would be the President of Presidents. I believe that God has a lot to say today to the presidents of the world, especially those that right now are struggling to lead the nations and lead their countries and their people through this time of coronavirus, this pandemic. And I believe what we're going to read here today is a special message for our president. Um, we know this connection that we're going to see here between the prophet Jonah going into Nineveh and I want you to notice the response of the king, how the king responds when he hears this prophetic message. And there's a, a special relationship that we see in all the scriptures of relationship between prophets and kings. Uh, we've got a great example in Daniel, how he counseled and, and, and ministered to Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, we've got the example of Joseph ministering and giving guidance to Pharaoh. Uh, many other examples, Samuel, David, but the prophets fulfilled a role of giving guidance, praying, supporting, encouraging, and of course, even holding accountable those kings. And so we know that it's really important that at this time that the church can speak into government and that together we believe that we can lead our nation South Africa even further. So it says in verse 1, it says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. And Jonah rose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city, a three-day journey in extent. Now, just for your geography, Nineveh was the capital of Assyria. It was located on the Tigris River, and um, we know that whole area is in Iraq today. They are still, you can go there and look at the ruins of this ancient city. And God had called Jonah to go there to minister. Now, these people were great people. It was a big city, exceedingly a three-day journey. It was 30 kilometers in length, 15 kilometers across, and surrounded by big walls. And these people, these Ninevites, were great people. Um, in fact, if you think of things that they invented and developed, well, it was the flushing toilet, um, paved streets, the postal system, a lot of great things, doors and locks that were all developed by the Assyrians. And so they were great people. But of course, morally, spiritually, they were coming short. And so why did God single them out? Why did God single out Nineveh to destroy them? Because their wickedness had come up before God. God had noticed that as great as they were in technology and sophistication and greatness of their city, that spiritually they were falling short. Folk, it doesn't matter how great we are as a nation, South Africa, how beautiful our country may be, how great we might be at rugby, the fact we got a World Cup, or the fact we make such good wines, or the fact that we... You know, Nelson Mandela was our own kinsman. Doesn't make a difference 
how the world says. We might think we are success, but we, God looks up. And the Bible says God looks at our hearts. And so as a nation, we can be doing all these great things, but we're missing God. And so we've got to make sure that God is always our priority. Amen? So here's Jonah bringing this message. And Jonah goes on this this preaching walk, and it says he began to enter the city on the first day's walk. He was crying out and saying, yet 40 days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. It, Jonah wasn't going on a prayer walk, as many Christians like to do those. No, he was much more confrontational. He was preaching, and he was giving a serious message. 40 days, in other words, six weeks, and God is going to overthrow your city. Now, that word overthrow, there in your Bible, it's literally the word in, in the original language, havak. And it's like all the people are hearing of this word, havak, havak, havak. And they're like, what is this? Now, that word, it means to topple over, to turn upside down. And all the years that they've taken to build this magic kingdom, this wonderful city of Nineveh, God would turn it over upside down and destroy it and so the people when they hear this they humble themselves before god they proclaim a fast put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them you know when we look at what is going on in our world right now we realize that god is calling the nations of the world to repentance i believe that we are on the brink of a great revival that we're going to see take place in this world in our days. Because this whole virus is really like God saying, Havak! It almost sounds like, wake up, doesn't it? God, get, you know, get your hearts right. Well, I'm going to overturn things. Already God is doing that, and we're seeing God today emptying out the pockets of the world, taking all their glory away. This whole COVID thing is costing a lot of money. And of course, economies are not going to recover quickly. Uh, we know it was just not so long ago that, that the UK finished paying off their debts for World War II. What was it? 2006. Just recently. I mean, wars cost money. Fighting viruses cost money. This is really going to affect the world in far bigger ways than I think any of us realize. And so look how the people respond. Now I want you to see, when we look at verse 6, how the king, the leader, the supreme one, how he responds. It says in verse 6, Then the word of the Lord came to the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And then he makes this proclamation to all the kingdom. And he says, look, don't let anyone eat or drink. Verse 8, let man and beast be covered with sackcloth, cry mildly to God. Here's the king taking this word seriously. And he's not messing around. He responds immediately. And I like this because here is a king. He didn't know Jonah, never seen him. But he heard and he responded. And he responds immediately. You know, I know many of us, we big procrastinators. You know, we think, uh, we put off things. And, you know, I just think those of you, you students, high school, college, whatever, you, you know how it is when you get a due date and, you know, you've got to give in a report or something. You wake up at the last moment. And then you stay up all night drinking Coke so that you can, you know, keep awake to, to get through with that assignment or whatever. Folk, this is not the way the king responded. And one of the things, and let me say this about our president, is I've lived through more than 10 presidents of South Africa, and I praise the Lord for this one. I really got a huge respect for our president because I believe the way he's responded in this COVID season has been phenomenal. And um, I, in fact, when remembering back to, I think it was the 5th of March, when that first COVID case came up, and uh, some man come back from Italy, brought the virus with them. And we see how quickly our president responded to that. 
Um, it was on the 15th of March that he declared a, a state of disaster. On the 17th, just a few days later, he established the COVID Command Council. And then before the end of the month, he had declared lockdown. He moved so quickly. This, that's an example of front-footed leadership. No delays. Just leading and moving forward. And we praise the Lord for such a leader. We can be thankful for our president. I hope you pray for him, by the way. Do you pray for our president every day? I think it's important that we are consistently praying for him. Now, you might ask, how can I better pray for our president? I'm sure he could tell you if he's watching. But I believe three areas that are very, very important. And that is the area of faith, the area of humility, and thirdly, the area of courage. I believe that if our president is going to lead us well in this season and we're going to see ourselves being delivered from this pandemic, I believe faith, humility, and courage are all going to go into this. So we can pray for that. But I want you to notice, and for our time together this morning in God's Word, I believe that God wants to show us something. God wants to teach us here this morning. He wants us to see what a huge difference it can make in a nation when a king is responding to the Word of God, when a prophet and a king come together and they begin to lead a nation in disaster. Here was a people in disaster, 40 days, havak, and they're going to be destroyed. And so God is showing us, look, he desires kings that would be moved by his word. And now the first thing I want to say this morning that we can learn from this king of Nineveh is that he believed God and the prophet Jonah. He didn't take those prophecies lightly. When he heard that message, he believed it. And this word, this scripture that we got, this book, of the Bible, it says, the Lord said to Joshua, don't let it depart from you, read it day and night. I believe that reading the Bible can make us greater and better people. And so we've got to take it all in. And so this king never questioned. He, uh, he never said, okay, well, hang on, Jonah, let me talk to my pagan priests and see what they have to see. You know, Nineveh had a lot of pagan temples and idols and here, they had their own religions. You know, there's something interesting here. You know, I know a lot of people, they say all religions are equal. Guys, don't believe that. It's not the truth by a mile. In fact, if anyone says that to you, you say, can you prove it? Ask him. Ask him, can you prove that all religions are equal? You know, if, if, if we look today and we look at all the different religions in the world, and you compare them to our faith in God, they come short. I mean, if you look even at all these prophetic books that we have in the Bible, Isaiah and Jeremiah, we no other religion can compare. All religions, they're not equal in prophecy. They're not equal in miracles. We look at Jesus turning water into wine, God parting the Red Sea, sparing Three men in a fire. No, you don't read of that in other religions. All other religions are not equal when it comes to miracles. And uh, then, of course, when we look at the person of Jesus, is there ever lead in any other religion that comes anything close to our Lord Jesus? No, there isn't. And so, you know, when we think about, we can often make these assumptions, all other religions are equal, and no, 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 no. Yeah, this king of Nineveh says, I'm going with what God says, and I'm going to act upon that. So let's not be divided with all. Let's just understand what God says in you. That's true. That's the truth. We'll act upon that. And guys, realize, let's not be people, you know, sometimes even our feelings. You don't want, your, you don't want to be led by your feelings, do you? We want to be led by God, by his word. Oh, well, we'll be led by what's going on. Here. No, don't be, be led by what God says in his word. Oh, well, I saw on TV. I, don't be led by TV. Be led by what God says in his word. 
The Bible says there's one God, Ephesians 4, 6, that there's one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. One God, one Father, and he's got one Son. And through faith in him, we are freed from our sins because he died on the cross for us. Jesus is the only religious leader, if we would call him that, who gave his life so that that we can claim ours, that we can be freed. Amen? So the king of Nineveh firstly fully believed God's word. So pray, President Ramaphosa, we pray for you that you would fully believe God's word and act upon it. Secondly, the king of Nineveh, look what he does. He personally humbles himself before God. It says, in verse 6, that he arose from his throne and he laid aside his robe. He covered himself with sackcloth and ashes. And so this king, he changes his dress and he changes his address. He leaves his palace, all the luxury and everything. He goes, sits on an ash pile somewhere and he takes his robes off, leaves them in the palace and he puts on sackcloth. You could literally say he got sacked. And there he was sitting in the pile, humbling himself, praying, repenting. You know, it's important because we know one day we are all, you, me, we're all going to stand before the judgments here. There's a day coming when, hey, young and old, rich and free, doesn't matter what you are, you are going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. And if your sins haven't been washed away, if you've never, like this king of Nineveh, repented, just think of your history, all your history, all that sin. If you don't lay that sin on Jesus, you've got to bear it yourself. You'll be judged. And so it's important for all of us to decide for Jesus, to make that choice to receive him as our Lord and Savior and be cleansed from our sins. Amen? So, thirdly, the king of Nineveh not only believed, he not only humbled himself, thirdly, he passes this decree. And this is amazing what he does. This took courage. Here's where you see the courage come in to him. It says in verse 7, he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles. And so he gets his government officials together. And he says, come on, come on, we've got to do something here. Let's make a decree. Let's pass a decree here that the whole city, listen, what was the population there? Half a million people. Let everyone here come and humble themselves before God and pray. He says, let neither man nor beast nor flock nor taste anything. Don't let them eat or drink water. Listen, this guy was serious. Let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn from his fierce anger so that we may not perish? This king of Nineveh, you know what he points out there is the violence in their hands. And, you know, when I look at this word and I realize that South Africa, we are probably a lot more like Nineveh than we realize. We are probably a lot more like those Assyrians than what we realize. There is a lot of violence in our country, violence against women. We know the way that uh, school students are behaving towards their teachers, uh, the, their rudeness. Uh, we know the way people respond to authorities, all these things. The Bible says that this is how the culture will behave in the days before Jesus comes back. Second Timothy chapter 3. Perilous times will come. People will be wrapped up in themselves, self-love. They will love their money. They won't care who they rip off. They'll be thieves. And it kind of goes on and on. And so the king here is acknowledging that his people are violent and evil and he says come now humble yourselves and i believe that here is an example where our president 
could lead the nation prophetically into repentance if he would follow in the ways of the king of Nineveh. This nation is a wicked nation, but God is a merciful God. God is a great and merciful God. And if we as a people, as a nation, if we will get serious with God, we will repent. We will turn from our evil. God will relent. And look what happens. It says in verse 10, Then God saw their works, that they turned from the evil way, and God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them. And he didn't do it. Isn't this just amazing? That they repented and God relented. God said, okay, no more time bomb here. No more havak. I'm going to spare this city. Why? Because the king led his people like a godly king. He repented, he believed, he repented, and then he calls his people with courage. Now you all must repent. Folk, this is what we need to pray. We need to ask God to give us a king like this king of Nineveh, that our president Ramaphosa would lead this nation, not only with the command council and, and you know, all those things that we need to do, the social distancing, the masks, lockdown, all of that. We praise the Lord for that. That saved a lot of lives. But we believe that this king of Nineveh acted in a spiritual way. And I believe that when we look at our country and we're seeing a lot of avak, avak, avak going on, that God can change it. And I see here in the scripture that God used a prophet. At first he wasn't so willing, but then he did get willing to preach. And as he preached, the king picked it up and the king ran with it. And this is what we got to pray for folk as church. I mean, is this your heart? Do you desire to see God bring restoration into families in our country? Do you desire God to change things in our schools? Do you desire God to change things in our community? We must humble ourselves before God. And we are going to start praying like never before. Church, we are praying that God would use our president to be a spiritual leader in this nation. We believe that he can if he follows in these ways with faith, with humility, and with courage. And by the way, doesn't just apply to him, applies to all of us. Guys, we've got to preach the gospel. We've got to see people turning to Jesus. I can imagine here in Nineveh where all these people were out in the streets with sackcloth and humbling themselves and crying loudly to God to have mercy upon them. I can imagine a scene like this right in our own city here in Cape Town. I can imagine, can you imagine Johannesburg and Durban and East London and Port Elizabeth, all these cities and all the towns and people on their knees and on their faces before God. I believe that God would bring such a sweeping revival to this nation. But we need a king, we need a president who would lead us just like the king of Nineveh. And even Jesus spoke of them, these Ninevites and the king. And he said, they will rise up in the judgment. Jesus even spoke favorably upon them. He said, they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And so I believe that God is calling us to repent personally. Remember, it started with the king. The king first repents. Then he starts all the other things. And so God wants us to have clean hearts, men and women. Have you done anything to anyone that you feel bad about? Is there anyone you need to apologize to? You need to repent. You need to get right before God. We've got to do those things. And so we've got to honor God. And listen, we need to support our president more. Are you supporting the president? Are you? We've got to pray for him. It's what Paul says to us in Timothy, 1 Timothy. But Romans 13, it says, Obey the rulers who have authority over you. Only God can give authority to anyone. And he puts these rulers in places of power. God, and so it says God puts them in power. And people who oppose the authorities are opposing what God has done. And God will bring judgment upon them. Folk, we have to get behind 
our leaders, our mayors, our government officials. We've got to get behind them. And so let's, let's pray. Let's take this word and run with it. Let's pray that our president gets to hear this message. And so he can have faith in the Lord, that he can humble himself, and that he can lead and call us as a nation to turn back to God and God Almighty. Wow, what a wonderful thing. Jesus. Isn't it interesting? Jesus' first message as he was preaching, saying, Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Church, I believe that Jesus coming is so much sooner than any of us realize. I believe we're living in this last hours on planet earth where we're going to see Jesus coming back. And if our hearts aren't ready, if we're not repented, turn from sin. If you are watching this and you haven't repented, you haven't come to Jesus Christ, there's someone who loves you dearly, a father who gave his son, Jesus, to die on a cross to carry your sins and my sin. And if you will receive him into your heart and life, you can be saved, you can be washed, you can be cleansed. And this doesn't just apply to some people. It applies to all people and all nations that will turn to him and acknowledge him as Lord and King of kings and Lord of lords. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord continue to encourage you. In just a few moments, we're going to go to prayer when members in our churches are praying for the president, won't you join us in these few moments of prayer as we call upon the Lord for President Ramaphosa, for our government, that God would use them to navigate us through this tough time on earth and that great disasters would be averted. And we're going to pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord bless you. I'm going to read relate so much to our actions uh, our president implemented in our country during the lockdown period and specifically the second part of this message it comes from James 2 from verse 13 it says here heavenly versus demonic wisdom who is wise and understanding among you let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to heal, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. And I want to pray, Lord Father God, for our president. We want to thank you, Lord Father God, that you have blessed him with spiritual wisdom, wisdom from above, Father God. And we pray, Lord, Father God, that you will direct him in all his ways, Father God. Strengthen him with your Holy Spirit, my God. And we pray for his protection, Father God, of his family and himself, Father God. Oh, Lord, Father God, be with our president in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 You bow ahead before you, Father Lord. Bring to you, sir, my pulse, Father Lord. And I ask you that you give him wisdom, Father Lord, so that he can lead this country, so that he can make great decision in the mighty name of Jesus Christ for the Lord. We also pray that you protect him and give him the power for the Lord to help us and guide us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ for the Lord. We ask you that you help him to bring back the country for the Lord to you for the Lord. We ask you that you help him understand your word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Heavenly Father, this evening Lord I come before you in the name of Jesus. And Lord I pray Lord for the the president and his cabinet ministers, Lord, that you will be with them tonight. In these trying times, may you give them wisdom, Lord, to make the right decisions and, and Lord, the kind of decisions, Lord, that will bring us peace and stability in this country, Lord. 
and I pray Lord that you will not allow any demonic influence Lord in the affairs of this country may you be there Lord to guide them lead them in everything Lord uh, Lord that we will have peace in this country and the Lord I pray Father that you will bring each and every one of them to salvation in the name of Jesus Father God, I just come before you this morning, Lord. I bring my president before you, before your throne, Father God. I want to ask you that you just give me your guidance and your strength, Father God, and your voice and of your words, Father God. I just give you the shield that you must feel that it would be good to see this, Father God, down your head. And just help me through this hard time of going down to the Lord. And just giving me strength, Lord. And Father God, I just come before you, Lord. I want to ask you that you would bless his family, Lord. And just keep me safe, Father God. And just for even every person in this, in this world, Lord, that you would just be with them through this hard time, Father God. And that you would just bless our nation, Father God. Heavenly Father, we come to this time of intercession believing what your word tells us. For there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. So Lord, we thank you for this revelation in your word, that over and above every government, there is a higher government that decides who is going to be appointed by you. And Lord, we believe that you have appointed the right man there. And Lord, we feel all the happier that uh, this man is one that you've chosen, is one who professes that he knows you and believes what your word says and that he's humble enough to admit his limitation in, as a man saying that uh, we haven't gone that route ever before and we pray lord that such in that hum spirit of humility that you will lead him and show him your will direct his path daily we pray and we pray lord uh, that all those who come to resist that authority may find themselves held back by your spirit we pray lord for this country do you hear the nations rage the people make the plot in vain as rulers and as kings Against the sun, against the kingdom that must come, the world rebels against them all. But look, he sits upon his throne, control belongs to him alone. Before his glory, who can stand? The God of power. Still. And the voice 
face of God will shake the earth to the wall that I will remain is a kingdom eternal and a church purified and the joy of the Lamb's wedding day and when the world returns again to traffic jams embracing friends Thank you so much for this beautiful message, Dimitri. If you have the desire to make Jesus Christ the absolute main focus in your life, why don't you take the next step? How does God want you to respond today? God doesn't want to be part of your life just on a Sunday for one hour. God wants to be part of your life every day. He wants to be part of all your decision-making processes, all your ups and downs. And by doing this, God will open up your spiritual eyes and a new life will start for you. If you desire this, please visit our homepage and click on our next steps. One of our next steps is our seven module course foundation. I've done it myself and I was very inspired. If you have any prayer or counseling needs, please leave us a message on our homepage and one of our elders will get in touch with you. Lastly, we need your help to get the message of the love of Jesus Christ out there. So like, subscribe and share right now. Thank you. Bye bye guys. Bye everyone. And please come and visit one of our weekly prayer meetings online.